The Galaxy S22 Ultra is now Samsung's latest flagship smartphone, but how does it stack up to the Note 20 Ultra now that it has that built-in S Pen? Let's find out! Yes, the Note 20 Ultra is from 2020, but it's still an absolute beast of a smartphone. So whether you're deciding if the S22 Ultra is worth the upgrade, you're deciding between the two, or just generally Galaxy curious, in this video, I'm gonna compare everything about these two phones from their overall performance, design, display, S Pen, camera performance, battery life, and lots more. You can jump straight ahead to specific sections with time codes in the description below. Of course, your first decision might come down to the price, the Note 20 Ultra is of course an older device, so it's generally going to be found for cheaper than the S22 Ultra, especially once you take into account things like discounts and trade-in value. I have provided latest pricing and availability with links in the description below. Okay, let's go! Let's kick things off with the design and the display. Now, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. Samsung has basically got the worst disguise ever with that S22 Ultra name. It's like it's walked into a party and be like, hey everybody, I'm the S22 Ultra and the Note series turns around and it's like, no, you're absolutely the Note 22 Ultra and you're not gonna convince me otherwise. Really, I can hardly tell the difference between these two, especially now the S Pen is integrated in the S22 Ultra. Look at them from the front. It's so hard to tell the difference. Really the key giveaway is that the Note 20 Ultra has that 6.9 inch display, whereas the S22 Ultra is slightly more squat with this 6.8 inch display. But really, they look the same at the front. But flip things over and take a look at the back. Now, the S22 Ultra is one good looking phone and I honestly never thought I would say that about the S series. I've always been a Note gal. I can totally admit that bias here. But the Note 20 Ultra, that camera domino effect, never really did it for me. So I'm really pleased to see that the S22 Ultra is more balanced in the hand. And obviously when you're placing it on a table without a case and you're trying to write on the screen with the S Pen, it's a little less rocky on the S22 Ultra than it is on the Note. That being said, I am gonna err on the side of caution and always be putting a case on these two babies just because A, they're expensive phones and B, I'm clumsy. And the newer generation of Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the S22 Ultra versus just the regular Victus version on the Note 20 Ultra, well, I still don't wanna test that out for myself. Now both of these screens look absolutely fantastic and despite differences in the refresh rates and resolutions and the overall brightness, they're really very, very similar in terms of that dynamic AMOLED display and overall performance. The S22 Ultra does get a little bit brighter at 1750 nits compared to 1500 on the Note 20 Ultra. And also when you are using them in broad daylight, I did notice it was a lot easier to see the S22 Ultra at maximum brightness. Both the screens support an adaptive 120 Hertz refresh rate. However, it's only available at the maximum WQHD plus resolution on the S22 Ultra. While this phone does have WQHD plus resolution, you're not able to use 120 Hertz with it. However, there is kind of a workaround that I've been enjoying since I've been using the Note 20 Ultra using Bixby routines. So every time I open the gallery app to look at photos, videos, or use YouTube, it will switch automatically to the WQHD plus resolution at 60 Hertz. And for all other apps, I stick to 120 Hertz at the lower res. There is another kind of ADB workaround that is probably a little bit more effective to getting 120 Hertz on this device at all times. However, it's probably beyond the scope of most users, but it's on Google if you're interested in trying it out. So starting things off with overall performance. Now the Note 20 Ultra is one of those special phones for me. And you know why? I'm gonna go on my rant again here, everybody, because it's the last Samsung phone along with the S20 FE and the Z Fold 2 to support MST or Magnetic Secure Transmission. This is that magic Samsung technology that they bought a couple years ago that allows you to use your phone at any terminal that does not accept NFC or contactless payments. Most of the world is moving to NFC, I know but I still love this phone because it's the last one that has it. Samsung Pay on this phone does not support MST. It just has regular NFC for contactless payments. Maybe you can, maybe you don't, but that's a big reason why I still love the Note 20 Ultra. And another reason, 
because it's also one of the last phones that has micro SD expandable storage. Maybe you're like, Lexi, just get out of the past. You're saying with your headphone jack, you got over that. Maybe you'll get over their micro SD. Maybe I will, but not today. Now, Samsung did try and soften the blow with the S22 Ultra by offering some discounts on this storage, but that's not going to be necessarily the case going forward. And considering that these phones shoot 8K video, among all of the other things they can do, it just, I'm just bummed out still that there's no expandable storage. Then there's the question of processor. Again, depending on where you live in the world, the S22 Ultra uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or Exynos 2200, whereas the Note 20 Ultra uses the Snapdragon 865 Plus or Exynos 990. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I don't really like to talk about the benchmark numbers specifically as something on paper doesn't necessarily stack up to real world performance. Instead, I like to do some side-by-side -side tests around some more resource intensive tasks, say like cutting down an 8K video shot on both of these phones. Same video, same length of time, cutting it down using the internal gallery tool. I could find that the 8K video was cut down slightly more quickly on the S22 Ultra by a second or so. Using a third party editing tool like Splice, the S22 Ultra actually cut down a 4K video significantly faster with the same edits, about five seconds faster than the Note 20 Ultra. S Pen time, love that click. As I said, S22 Ultra at first, S series with the S Pen integrated into it. Samsung was getting us ready with the S21 Ultra, that I didn't look anything like this phone. It's still, for all intents and purposes, the Note 22 Ultra, because the functionality between S Pens on both of these devices is the same. They also look the same in terms of the pen itself, the position in the body, what happens when you unclick the pen, you get that S Pen menu. You can use the S Pen as a remote shutter release, which is my personal favorite. There's also air actions, so you can use the S Pen to say navigate web pages or interact with the phone without touching the screen. It also has translate to text and AR doodle and being able to write on the screen when the phone is locked. And anecdotally, the S Pen does feel a little bit more responsive on the newer phone compared to the Note 20 Ultra. But that being said, I've been using the Note for a lot longer and it's kind of like an old pair of slippers. Comfortable, I don't know exactly what I'm getting. Maybe it's all in my head, but the S22 Ultra, that latency, yeah, it's a little bit more like a fancy pair of heels, Louboutins, sleek, faster, sexier. All right, time to dive into camera performance. Let's take a look at some of the side-by-side -side images from both of the phones. As you probably know, both of these phones have a 108 megapixel main rear sensor using a technique called pixel binning that helps to generate smaller 12 megapixel files if you choose. Now in good lighting conditions, both of these are gonna produce great results at 12 megapixels. There's really no surprises there. The S22 Ultra picture defaults have been tweaked a little bit. So with the JPEGs, it does look like they have a tiny bit more contrast and saturation than those same shots from the Note. But at 108 megapixels, you can definitely see the shot on the S22 Ultra is sharper around edges of foreground objects with less fall off than the Note 20 Ultra, like on the sign. Now the S22 Ultra uses an ultra wide, a main rear camera, a three times and 10 times optical zoom camera going out to 100 times maximum. The Note 20 Ultra has an ultra wide, a main rear camera, a five times optical camera, and then goes out to 50 times maximum. Look, neither of these look great at their maximum space zoom, but at least you can get a little closer on the S22 Ultra. I really do like having the flexibility of three and 10 times optical zoom on the newer phone compared to just one optical zoom at five times on the Note. But that being said, the digital zoom or hybrid zoom at 10 times on the Note is pretty good. And I wouldn't be that upset if that's as far as I wanted to go. The biggest differences I noticed on the cameras of these two phones came down to actually portraits and selfies, surprisingly. Portrait mode is better on the S22 Ultra. There's more detail and the subject separation is a lot better. Now it also uses a three times camera compared to two times on the Note. And this actually helps produce, I think, a cleaner looking image as well. 
For selfies, the S22 Ultra has a 40 megapixel front facing camera, the Note has a 10 megapixel camera. But you know, resolution aside, it's really the photo processing that plays the most difference. And the photo modes on both of these phones on the front facing camera are slightly different. I did try and keep them as consistent as possible by using either the standard or natural effect on both. But I really do prefer the look of the S22 Ultra selfies. They do have a little bit better dynamic range and they also have a little bit better shadow detail as well, especially on things like say the shadow from my hat, for example. And the Note does tend to sort of over sharpen selfies a little bit. I prefer the S22 Ultra here. Night photos. Now this one was definitely not as dramatic as I was expecting or as dramatic as all of the marketing material would make you believe. The S22 Ultra and Note 20 Ultra are very similar when it comes to low light. That being said, the S22 Ultra, I think, does have a more natural night mode effect. It doesn't brighten the scene as much or as uniformly as the Note does. You might like the look of the Note a little bit more. It's more of a true, I guess, night mode feel, but it does feel more natural on the newer phone. It's also a little bit more sharp at 100% magnification on the S22 Ultra. But then it kind of flips because when you're using the 108 megapixel sensor without night mode, I actually prefer the Note shots. Like, what's going on? I don't understand. How is the older phone producing a nicer looking 108 megapixel shot in low light? Beats me. And finally, video. Now, yes, both the phones shoot 8K, 24 frames a second, but most people are probably just sticking to shooting 4K 60. Side by side, the video image looks fairly similar. I would say the S22 Ultra, the image does look a little bit cleaner overall and it does look like stabilization is slightly better for say walking shots. But don't forget if you want to use super steady stabilization, that's only available at 1080p resolution on both of these phones. I did try and stick to 4K just so we could see it, you know, in all its glory here on the video. So there you have it. The differences were really not as significant as I was expecting between these two phones, especially considering this is almost a year and a half newer than the Note. Good job, old Note. You did me proud. Time to dive into battery life, charging, and all the other bells and whistles that you get on these two phones. Okay, let's throw ourselves a party because Samsung has, has done some good stuff here because it's brought back 45 watt charging on the S22 Ultra. Like, mwah, thank you so much. The last time we saw this, you know, I thought it would have gone the way of the Dodo with the S20 Ultra, Note 10 Plus, love those phones. But it's back, it's back, baby, because <laughs> this phone has it. 25 watts on the Note 20 Ultra. Look, most people probably don't care. And in reality, it doesn't make that huge of a difference, really. But of course, I had to do a side by side to show you from flat to fully charged, 45 watts, 25 watts to see what the difference really was. As you know, battery life is affected by a number of variables like the processor in the phone, as well as your usage patterns, how bright the display is, etc., etc., etc. I don't want to bore you by talking about battery life variables. But under the same parameters, the Note 20 Ultra and S22 Ultra were not as dramatic of a difference in battery life as I was expecting, even though this has a 5,000 milliampere hour battery and this has a 4,500. In terms of my usage patterns and my battery testing, I do have the always on display active when the phone is locked. I have it set generally to the highest resolution on both, 120 Hertz refresh on this and my fancy Bixby routines trick on the Note 20 Ultra and about two to three hours of screen on time a day. I find the S22 Ultra leaves me with about 20% battery remaining at the end of the day, whereas the Note 20 Ultra is more like 15%. But if I do turn off the always on display on that lock screen, I can push it a little bit further. And sometimes I can get to overnight and then maybe an hour or two before I do need to charge both of these. But overall not as dramatic again as I was expecting. These phones also support Samsung DeX and the functionality is very much the same on both. Of course, being phones, we do need to talk about call quality and speaker quality because some of you probably like to take calls on this, I guess. I mean, I definitely do. Consistently, the Note series of phones, because this one's actually a Note, I don't care what anyone says, it's the Note 22 Ultra, has been consistently one of the best performing phones in terms of phone calls speaker and microphone quality that I've tested. I find them very, very similar. Callers always remark that my voice sounds clear and crisp. 
I've also had zero issues with connectivity in San Francisco on both of these phones. Of course, that's gonna vary depending on your carrier and so on, but performance has been really, really good when out and about. The speaker quality itself, yes, most of you probably don't listen to music blasting loud from your phone, but I do like to test it out to test if there is any significant difference. S22 Ultra maybe sounds a tiny bit clearer when playing a really high fidelity song back from say Tidal, but again, marginal, marginal differences. And of course, let's talk Android updates. This one is where the biggest difference is probably going to be for a lot of you because the Note 20 Ultra being an older device is not going to get as many updates necessarily as this phone because Samsung has promised that this will get up to four generations of or four years of Android updates, which is good news. The Note 20 Ultra might as well, but there's no guarantees. And considering this is an older device, I would assume that the support would drop off earlier than the S22 Ultra. Now it comes down to the time where I need to decide which one of these phones is the better buy for me and for you. Hopefully it will help you make your decision too. This one is always a tough one, but you know what? I'm a note girl. I can 100% admit that bias. And the S22 Ultra has completely won me over because it's a Note 22 Ultra. Again, I don't care what anyone says. This phone is a beautiful device to use, especially if you are looking for a more balanced feel in the hand. The screen is fantastic. I love being able to have 120 hertz refresh rate without any fancy bells and whistles and tricks behind the scenes. The cameras are great, even though, as you saw, the Note 20 Ultra really kind of did hold its own except for when it comes to those zoom variants. And overall, the battery life and performance is excellent. So I'm sorry, Note 20 Ultra, like we've had a good run, but I'm going S22 Ultra. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope I answered all your questions for you. If not, you can always leave me a comment down below. Find me on your favorite social media app. And you can also check out the latest pricing and availability of these phones in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go and take my Note 22 Ultra for a spin. See ya.